Well, greetings Scratchers. This is another super fast video on how to add Minecraft style three-dimensional graphics to your Scratch programming. One of the super fun things as a programmer is to try to make it look like you have technology that you don't actually have when you write a program. And in my Redlands Conservatory class, the number one question the kids have asked me over and over again is, could we do Minecraft on Scratch? And I think the right answer is, um, you know, I always think you can do anything <laughs> on any language. Um, so the answer is sort of. You can definitely fake it. It definitely looks good. And by adding some Minecraft style graphics and some 3D different types of costumes to your programs, I think you really can pull off a pretty darn decent 3D effect. Now in Scratch, the one thing that is probably lacking from having a Minecraft type environment uh, is that you really don't have a lot of variable uh, storage capabilities. So it's pretty hard to have objects picked up and things like that happen. I don't know if it's impossible or not. I hope one of you will write a program and prove to me that it is possible. So this looks fairly complicated. The reality is it is not complicated at all. But let me jump here to a simplified version to, to demonstrate that. So for a complete walk cycle, check this out. Here's Steve over here. He's kind of staring aimlessly into space as Steve usually does, being a computer generated character. I'm gonna go ahead and click the, uh, the flag there and we can see here's that walk cycle that was created. Now the code that you're looking at over here is very, very simple. We've just got a glide command, our starting position for Steve, 176 X and 84 Y, puts him at this corner of the screen. And then we have him glide for nine seconds to our landing point, which is right over here. Uh, and then while he's making, this sprite is making this long glide across the screen, we have our walk cycle here, which is nothing more than cycling through a set of pre-drawn costumes. And as you know, the costumes tab is right here. And there are 18 costumes for this walk cycle. You can probably make a walk cycle which is completely ac adequate in, you know, maybe four or five different costumes. It really doesn't have to be this complicated, but it's not hard to make a complicated walk cycle if you are nabbing 3D graphics, as I did, off the web from some very talented people. So my son is a Blender programmer, Mackenzie, and um, he got uh, a, a Steve character in his 3D program and then posed it throughout the different motions for the walk cycle and I captured all those. You will not have to do any of that if you'd like to use our Steve because I'm going to give you 134 costumes which is 10 complete um, walk cycles for Steve so he can walk at diagonals, he can walk forward, he can walk backward. So you can download everything we've already done and immediately import this into your your games and your programs. So another quick look back at the script and you can simply see uh, we set his size at 75% because as he's walking towards us we want his size to slowly increase so we change his size each time he takes a step by 0.2. Uh, you can any, vary any of these numbers of course and, uh, and create a walk cycle where he gets large faster, where he's moving more quickly, moving more slowly and it's just cycling through that simple set of, of 18 costumes. And that's really all there is to a basic walk cycle. So if you wanted to get Steve yourself, I just want to go into slightly, slightly more detail. One of the things you can always do is you can always head over to YouTube and type in green screen Minecraft. You've got two super cool things here that'll be at your disposal. One is it shows you how from within Minecraft you can create a green screen and put Steve in front of it. It's just a nice smooth green background. Apparently you need to have a PC to do this as the other versions of Minecraft are more difficult for you to change your palette back here to, to a pure green. They always want to have a texture. So what you would do is you'd create a green screen and then you would run your Steve character around with whatever motions you would like and you would capture that. You can do that using a program like this, Screen uh, Cast-O-Matic. It's really my favorite. It's what I'm using right now to create this video for you. Once you've captured that, you can take your Steve now that you've captured all the motions you'd like him to do in your Scratch game and you can go to any simple video editor. So I use Sony Vegas and from Sony Vegas you can take that little video clip that you just created and you can save it as a series of pictures. So in this case uh, for Sony Vegas it's going to be the same for any program basically. I would choose render as and then I would come up to one of the outputs here, image sequence and I will render it as a JPEG or a GIF. Everything I'm telling you right now is just if you wanted, boy he looks really sad right there doesn't he? I'm sorry Steve. 
<laughs> I guess he wants he wants you to get the whole the whole full scope of things. So you can create your own walk cycles right off the game. There are green screen if you scroll through on YouTube. There are green screen walk cycles that have already been built by other people. You can capture those videos in any of a number of ways and then grab frames from them to use in your game. You don't have to do it as I said because we've already got that all set up for you. So here's the, here's the full big program where we can make Steve dance and it's got all the different options. And as I said, it looks it's complicated here, but it is actually extraordinarily simple. Uh, all that we did for this, or all that I did for this, is I took each key if the number one key is pressed, and I would have it switch through the set of costumes that are for that cycle. So right here we have his head moving to the left. So if I were to press uh, our green flag and get Steve started here, I'll exit that sequence. It wants us to make Steve dance. We've got the music coming on. But when I press that number one, his head will turn to the left. And we have a sequence uh, for his head to turn to the left. If you press the number two, it turns to the right. You press the number three and you've got an arm go up. And all we're doing with all of this, let me go ahead and shut that music down, is I've got those 134 costumes here for you. And I've got them all labeled. Now you may be able to help me with this with a comment. Uh, when I labeled these, um, Scratch started relabeling some of them. So a little, of them, a little bit of them are slightly counterintuitive and I couldn't figure out how to fix my labeling. But you can see head left one, head left two, head left, see it jumped to five, head left four. I don't know why it changed my numbering and put them out of order, but they're in the correct order uh, as by the numbers here on the left hand side. So you can look and hear your head left sequence is, I believe it's 10 steps long. So let's look down here. Yeah, 10 step. And then we have your head right sequence, which is, so head left is from one to 10. Head right, <clears throat> excuse me, is from 11 to, let's see, 11 to 20. And then, so each of these different sequences is about 10 frames long, and the walking sequences are each about 12 frames long. So all you've got to do is download this basic uh, software here that I've got up on the Scratch site and I've got on the web page for you and then make a simple loop, uh, your for loop, actually what do they call it here? We call it uh, uh, a repeat or a forever loop and tell it to change costumes. So if you change costumes one through 10, he's going to go ahead and tilt his head to the left. If you change costumes uh, 10, uh, 11 through 20, he's gonna move his head to the right. And so when we look back here at what seemed complicated a minute ago, it really, really isn't complicated because that's all it is. Let's step just experimentally quickly through one and I'll wrap this video up for you. But uh, if we go to the first one, for example, it would say switch to head left. So that first command sets us up at the beginning of the sequence we want. And then we have to have a delayer. He'd turn his head so fast that we wouldn't even be able to see it. So I did a, a hundredth of a second to, or a delay there. So 0.01 seconds. And then we know that we're going to repeat the next, uh, we're going to go move through the next nine frames. So I say repeat nine times, do the next costume. Each time you show another costume, wait another hundredth of a second, and then go back and repeat it again. So nine times it'll change costumes uh, until it gets to the end of the sequence. So all I had to do is for, I had to identify my head turn sequence and then find how many frames to assign then it, my other head frame sequence, and same with each of the cycles. So although this looks like a lot of code, it's not. It's the same thing over and over again. It's a key pressed, and then it just runs the costumes that would be corresponding to that key. And that's all there is to it. The last thing, which uh, gives us kind of a neat 3D effect, is of course we want to have some perspective. Uh, it's really cool when background elements, if you move towards something, it should get bigger. If you move away from something, it should get smaller. I did a previous video on this, which actually explains it in better detail. And I'll try to put a link up here in the video so that if you want to jump to the other video and see how that's done, uh, we won't have to repeat ourselves. Uh, and, uh, and here I've got a separate routine. These are all just your animation sequences. This is simply your exit sequence so that when the uh, letter Q is pressed, it simply broadcasts to ending. And so it ends the program. Um, but this sequence is the one thing that you might want to look at if you download the program uh, that is a little bit of a programming challenge. Not, not too much, but I used two variables, um, our Y position variable, and I had it detect whether the Y position has changed and whether it's gotten larger or whether it's gotten smaller. So each time it cycles through this routine, it just checks to see if there's been a change in the Y position. And if it's gotten bigger, then it changes our background size uh, by one. And if it's gotten smaller, 
then it changes our background size by minus one. And there's nothing more to it than that. This is just a routine to determine where our character is. And it's really an advantage uh, to rather than to do it by animation rote and simply say, do this, do this, do this again and again. It's really great to say, do this and look at where you are and then display things around you correctly. And with a handful of these types of routines attached to sprites, you can create quite a complex 3D environment, even in Scratch, where many objects um, will get larger as they come towards you, smaller as they go away. And of course, since you've got a little animation cycle between them, there's going to be a complete 3D element to what's going on. So have fun with your scratching away, and don't forget to make Steve dance, and let me know how your dance came out. <laughs>